All right. Okay, well, we want to welcome everybody here and anybody listening or watching on uh, uh, Facebook Live and also eventually on YouTube because everything gets posted on YouTube to the Desert Center School of Ministry. So let's give the Lord a hand clap this evening. So I hope everybody's got your Bibles. I got my... I got what I'm going to be teaching out of, and I got my faithful flash water here, so I can knock anybody down. And if anybody's phone rings, I can stretch out and get them like that too. So <laughs> I'm armed and ready. Okay. Um, so why don't we open up with some prayer, Pastor Ryan? Go ahead. Father God, thank you for this time, Lord. Uh, allow us to open our hearts to your word, to your uh, wisdom, to your understanding, Lord. We thank you for dying on the cross. A death that we should have died, Lord. Um, help us, Lord. Every day we need your help. We need uh, to survive spiritually and physically with you, Lord. We thank you for being so merciful and grateful toward us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Well, okay, so we're still on chapter one, but we're getting ready to get into chapter two. But we're, uh, but we're going to finish uh, chapter one on what your aim or what your call as a minister is, okay? And um, my, I think we're on point seven. And point six was that you have been exalted as a steward, a servant of God. We talked about how as stewards we're, mystery, we're, we're stewards of the mysteries of God. The rest of the world doesn't know. But, but we, we hold the key to the mysteries of, 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 the, of, of God to our knowledge in the Word and to our relationship with Him. Right, right? So, from there, okay, we, we go to something that I've already talked about. you probably heard me say it, but we want to read it as it is in the, our study. And that is that you have been called, point seven, you have been called as an ambassador for Christ. You've been called as an ambassador for Christ. So, somebody go ahead and read for me, because I always like to put Scripture with it. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 through 21. When you get there, whoever's going to read, raise your hand. Chapter okay. 5. Yeah, Pastor Ryan. Okay. 18, 18 through 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and the Word of God reads, All this is from God, who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the, min the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to him. Okay. I think that this is an important scripture, and probably one that all of us at some point in time ought to underline. I always think there are certain scriptures, at least for me, that are like five-star scriptures. And this is one of them. Okay, because number one, we're ambassadors of Christ. But what does that mean? I mean, you know, when we think of an ambassador, I always have told you that just like a person can be an ambassador to a president in a country or an ambassador to some king, we're ambassadors to the Lord. We're not in, we're in this world, right? But we're not of the world because we're ambassadors of Christ. So we carry his message. But then the question comes back to what is his message? As ambassadors, what message is it that we ought to be carrying? And this scripture actually tells us. So does anybody from reading this know what it says? If you read, go back and read um, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 18-21 yourself. And then tell me what, as ambassadors of Christ, what what He's committed us to do. Okay, brother. Um, like uh, representing, we, or we're uh, yeah, about to, uh, being, yeah, representative. We're being representatives. Okay, yes. go ahead, brother. We're helping uh, reconcile people with Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah. Bring them back to Christ. Bring them back to Christ. Yeah. So the answers are both correct. Number one, we are representing them, but, in, we're, but how are we representing them? We're representing them as ambassadors, and our message is to the world to be reconciled. Yeah. You know, you can't be reconciled 
if you were not once in a, you know, as a, and I'm speaking more of mankind and humankind, if humankind wasn't once in a recon in a, a relationship with the Lord, and then it broke, or broke up, right? That there there could be no reconciliation. When we talk about the word reconciliation, we think of the two people that were together. When we think of a man or a woman, they got in an argument, broke up, they got reconciled, they worked it out, right? Our message is to work it out, because all all of mankind, okay, was lost. Any? Okay. Do you, so you guys understand, right? All of mankind has been lost because of what happened in the garden in Adam and Eve. All of mankind has borne the consequences ever since then. Women, they bear pain in childbirth, still. Man still toils the ground by the sweat of his brow, still. So we live in a, a system that's run by Satan, even though Christ died for us. We can rise above that system by accepting what he's done for us on the cross. And we walk in, in a certain measure in victory. You know, we still die. We get old, we die. Back when Adam and Eve walked on the earth, they were, it was, they were intended never to die. I don't know if you knew that, but that's why the tree of life was in the garden. But the Lord, in his graciousness, took the tree of life out because if they, they were in sin. And if they were in sin, can you imagine eating of the tree of life and living in, in, eternally as sinners in, 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 as sinners in the world got you man okay so so the ministry now that we have is one of reconciliation one of bringing the world back because even though there are many people out, out there that say well I've never been a believer I've never been a Christian it's already because mankind has already fallen away from a relationship that, that they once had in the Garden of Eden, right? And now, our job as Christians, those of us, we ourselves have been reconciled to the Lord. So now as ambassadors, we need to reconcile others. So, souls, okay? Relationship, the importance of people coming into a relationship but with God, having salvation, that is reconciliation. To be saved from the gates of hell, to be able to enter into heaven, to have a walk with Him, to know that we could be healed and, uh, and delivered. And like I say, we don't see the full manifestation of everything. We're not perfect. We don't walk in immortality right now. But I'll tell you what, you know, depending on how submissive to the Lord we want to be, we can walk pretty close to immortality um, uh, in, in the sense of saying that while we're not immortal, we can get we can get really really right right to that point almost of walking in uh, I don't want to say perfection but walking in, in really obedience and in a high level with them you know the Bible says that the Lord took Enoch because he was pleasing to him right he and then we see certain situations like that Elijah caught up you know and and uh, and, and things like that so if if we can become submissive to the Holy Spirit, we can uh, we can walk in a greater level of, of commitment, dedication, and reality in our relationship with Him, but we can also bring others into that. Because it's kind of hard to bring people into something if you haven't gotten there. We can't minister to others what we don't have. And I know, I realize, you know, none of us are perfect, and we're going out, we, don't, we can't wait to be perfect to try to minister to others. But at the same time, you can't minister to others something you don't have yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a relationship and that relationship with Christ isn't really real to you, how are you going to tell somebody else that it's, it could be real for them? And how are you going to be able to minister that? So we need to get, we need to get that and make sure that we have that, that, that type of relationship. Now, the, that's all I have to say about that. Um, the thought behind it in our text, I'll read it as this, okay? God has called you to be his ambassador to the world. He has given you the ministry of delivering the message of God to the whole world, the message of reconciliation. No greater call could ever be issued. Think about that. No greater call could ever be issued. No higher position could ever be held. That, that, when you think about that, that's huge because 
there are so many, even in Christian ministry, that are trying to still obtain positions. They're trying to climb a ladder, uh, like a pyramid, up to some kind of point, which somehow makes them Messiah 2 or Messiah 3 or something. I don't know what, what they're trying to do. But, 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 but the greatest position held, okay, according to the writer here, and I agree with him, is that message of reconciliation that no greater call could ever be issued and no higher position could ever be held. Then he goes on to say, note two significant points here. Number A, okay, you are given the highest of titles. You are a, quote, ambassador of Christ. Then he goes on to say, the ambassador, to, a, ambassador is a person who is sent forth as an official envoy to represent the sender. Who is the sender? God, the Lord. And you're an ambassador, okay? That's the highest of titles any, anyone could have. Anyone. That's higher than the president, okay? Okay, so the ambassador is a person who is sent forth as an official envoy to represent the sender and to announce the message of the sender. Okay, four things are always true about the ambassador, okay? So listen to these four things. Now, these are important for you guys, okay? So, ears up, antennas up, or whatever. Okay, number one, okay, you are important. You belong to the one who sent you out. You belong, not, not, not just to Pastor Ryan, because he's your, but you, you know, he's your pastor. But your, your, your loyalty, number one, and for Pastor Ryan, too, he doesn't belong just to set free, okay? We belong to the one who sent us out. And that's the Lord. Okay, man cannot make you an ambassador of Christ. Okay, that man cannot make, make, make he can't put a title on you, or, or, or I should say a gifting on you. He can put titles on you, but titles and papers, that's all they are. Okay, but it's the gifting. And, and, and to be able to walk as an ambassador is only something that God can give. Okay, so you belong to the one who sent you out, and that's the Lord. You need to know that, that. That's who you belong to. Okay, the second point is that you're commissioned, you are commissioned to be sent out. You exist only for the purpose for which you were sent. That's your only reason to exist. That's kind of hard to, for maybe some people to um, imagine. You mean, when you say, you mean my, my life is only worth that? But when you think about it, that's everything. You know, when you, when you can say, look, I exist only for the purpose for which I was sent. You're saying, I exist only to serve the Lord. That doesn't mean that God doesn't want you married. It doesn't mean that you don't uh, have a job or other things. But your priority in life, the main thing, the most important thing, if everything else was be, would be done away with, is that you still exist only for the purpose of serving Him. The purpose for which you were sent, to bring reconciliation. It will always be that way, folks. Listen to me. The callings of God are irrevocable. Amen. The Bible says His callings are without... Irrevocable means without repentance. God doesn't say, geez, you know what? You became a Christian. You screwed up. You fell on your face. Man, I'm sorry I ever made you a Christian. Or I ever commissioned you for any... God's not sorry. He just wants you to get back up. Yeah. And, and, and move forward. And not stay on the ground. And not stay in the gutter. But just get up. Because all of us have come from somewhere, but we, we, it's not an excuse to stay there. We have to get up, we have to go forward and, and, and be what God has called us to be. So, you're commissioned to be sent out. You exist only for the purpose for which you were sent. Point three. You possess, listen to this, this is good. You possess all authority, all the authority and power of the one who sent you out. Who sent you out? Jesus. Jesus. So do you realize what's being said here? You possess all the authority and power of Jesus. Right. You. You. You with Amen. the glasses. You with the shaved Amen. head. You with the tattoos. You with the E's on your shirt. Whatever those mean. I can't read them. E something. They look pretty cool. E-centered. E-centered. E -centered. All right. Entertainment. All right. All right. All right. But you possess all the authority and the power of the one that sent you out. So God is not going to send you out and leave you hanging in the air. He's giving you His authority. He's giving you His power. That's why He said one, that for those that believe, when you believe, what did He say? You'll go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, 
do certain things. These signs shall what? These signs shall accompany those who believe. They'll heal the sick. They'll raise the dead. They'll do out, cast out demons. They'll do miracles. Folks, we we we. That's what we need to be doing. I, I have a concern for a lot of churches, and 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 as a minister myself, I would be. I would not be doing what God wanted me to do if I didn't have a concern for this church. But uh, the concern that I have, have for this one, too, is that, okay, we don't just believe and then sit there. All right? But these signs shall accompany them that believe. They shall, I think the word says, uh, cast out demons, heal the sick, do miracles. I think it says they should speak with other tongues or something like that, but I have to go and look, and look at that and see if that's the case. But anyway, the bottom line is this, okay? We should be moving as He moves. And the power of the Holy Spirit should be moving through us to the world. They ought to see something different. Not just a bunch of people attending classes, although the, the classes that we attend are all important, right? No. Because we learn from them. But what about after we attend the class? What about after we go to work? What about after we leave here and we go home? And what, what happens to, to then? What, 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 what about our life? What, what, what's the next step? We, you know, any one of you, it doesn't take a pastor of a church to be able to, to lay hands on somebody and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Or in the name of Jesus, be set free. You know, there are people that are in bondage. They're going through mental stuff, physical stuff, all kinds of things, okay? God has given us the authority to deal with all of that. But we have to know who we are, okay? When we know who we are, we can move in that authority. The devil, one of the biggest things that the devil wants to do is keep people from knowing who they really are, their identity, what it really is in Christ. Okay, because as long as God can keep you from knowing who you are, you'll never walk in the authority of the Lord because you don't know. You understand? So, I, I hope you hear, you get what I'm saying here. Okay, the fourth point is here. You are sent forth with the message of the sender. The message is not your own. Now, man, I, I wish I could knock that into the heads of about a million preachers in the United States today because it's a problem in the a church in America and in a lot of places. Can you repeat that again? Yeah. You are sent forth with the message of the sender. The message is not your own. It's not your message. Mm -hmm. there, there, are, there are ministers and pulpits that preach their own message, their own doctrine, their own idea. They, they preach whatever they want to preach in order to keep the church filled. And that's why the Bible says in the last days, men will humble to a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Can you imagine in the last days people getting to go together and going to church, but then deep in their heart they don't even believe. They deny the very power of the Lord thereof, right? So we need to understand that we're sent forth with a message of the sender. When we go, we go with the message of Christ. <coughs> The message, though, is not our own. It's not to be our own. And we're not to take credit for it either. As if it were our own. Okay? Okay, so... A, point A, was that... You are, you are given the highest of titles. You're an ambassador of Christ. Then we gave four points uh, along with A. And now point B is this, okay? You are given the greatest of messages. And what is that message? Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. Okay? This message is so critical that you are to beseech men. You are to beg, to entreat, cry, plead with them to be reconciled to God. Can you, can you imagine that? But see, see, folks, I mean, that might sound extreme to you, but that is your calling as a minister. We're, we're all ministers, right? Do we believe, is that true? I mean, I think I ask that every, every lesson. And we all agree, right? Who's a minister? All of us are ministers, right? Okay. But as such, all right, we can't, we've got to be humble enough, okay, to be willing to beg, entreat, cry, and plead with people on the outside to be reconciled to God. Whatever it takes. You know? It's not like, well, you know. It's up to you. It's your choice. You, you can either make it or, you, or, or whatever, or go to hell. And we, we, and I mean, not all that's true, but you know, we don't have to have a flippant attitude about it. Yeah. We ought to make the, make the effort to try to really bring people to the Lord. So we can say, 
that we've done all we could do. I have prayed for you. I have talked to you. I, I've entreated you. And I've done all the things he says here. You know, I, I've begged you. I've entreated you. I've cried out for you. I've pleaded with you to be reconciled to God. If they don't want to do it after that, it's on them. At least they can't say they didn't know. Yeah, Is that right? Amen. It's our responsibility. You know? Amen. Okay? So... Then he goes on to say, Note that it is for Christ's sake that you are to plead with men. It's not for your sake. It's not for our glory. It's not, we're not like gunslingers leading people to the Lord and then putting a notch under our gun for every person that we kill. You know, every person we bring to the Lord. Okay, well, I got, let's see, ten people. That makes, you know, it's not like that. Okay? We're not doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it to build a reputation or to establish, you know, the kind of credibility people try to establish, you know, street cred or something like that in the church and bring it into the church. What we're trying to do is we have to understand that it's for Christ's sake that we plead with men. It's for Him. It's because of Him. It's because of what He's done, what He did on the cross. Okay? Christ has paid the ultimate price. Here He says it. Christ has, pr has paid the ultimate price to make reconciliation available to men. He has taken the sins of men upon himself and borne the condemnation for them at the cross. Because he has done so much, every person owes his life to Christ. Every person should be reconciled to God. For Christ's sake, a person should give himself to God. That's for the people out in the world, but it is especially true for us as ministers. We owe our lives to the Lord. I've seen people get snuffed out in seconds. I've, I've talked with people in the next day they weren't around. Some of them here at Set Free. You know, at the very last minute, uh, I can think of one person and then uh, made a con uh, acceptance to the Lord. And he had heard my, me preaching to him for three or four years. The next day he was dead. Mm. Got in a car accident, drunk hit him. You know, and that was it. He was in perfect health. Should have lived probably for another 30, 40, 50 years. But you know, when your time comes, your time comes. And, and we don't know. All of us are only one heartbeat away from Amen. eternity. One way, in one place or another. And when we view things like that, and the reality of it, that once a person dies, they're either in heaven or they're in hell. And there is no coming back. And we think about people that we know, I think about people I know. I know my mom. She just passed away. I, I know she's with the Lord because she, she was a Christian. But I also know many of our friends growing up and many of my own friends growing up and people that I used to hang, hang with. That, you know, I'm not going to judge. Anybody could repent maybe at the final second or that microsecond before they go and I can only pray and hope they did. But I know that if they didn't, I know where they are and they're not in heaven. You know? And, and so... We have to really have this sense of urgency to care about a, per, a person's eternal destination and to care about where we go. So don't take your walk with the Lord. Don't take your walk with the Lord lightly. Okay? Don't take it for granted. Don't take God for granted. Don't take set free ministries for granted. Don't take your pastors for granted. Don't take when you get together and evangelize and do things for granted. Don't take your Bible studies and men's studies for granted. Don't let the women take their women's studies for granted. Okay? But we need to make every moment count. Don't take your work sites wherever you go. Don't take that for granted because it's an opportunity to minister. And even if you say nothing, you're still a witness to other people because they're watching you. You're, they're saying... When, when, when Pastor Ryan goes out and gets the job and he lets people know what Set Free is all about, he's letting them know. It's a, it's a representative of, of people that have been changed, you know, that are walking with Christ. I, I don't know what, exactly what he says, but I'm assuming that's what it is. We're a, we're a, we're a ministry, and, and, uh, and, and, and people associate that with a relationship with God. So naturally, they're going to put you under a magnifying glass. And, and so we need to do our best to take our relationship with God serious, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. Because, folks, listen to me, and I know this from my own experience. Whether I'm in a church or whether I'm by myself, there's always somebody watching. 
and you're under a you're under a magnifying glass whether you want to be there or not. Okay, it's not your choice. And if you made a choice for Christ, you're going you're under a magnifying glass. I'm under a magnifying glass all the time at home, in my own house. You know, because I got to come in here and preach, and my own my own family comes here and listens to me, and then I got to go home and live what I preach. And if I blow up and do the same, and, and if I blow up and say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, you know, it's like a double-edged sword, man, coming right at me. You know, looking at me like, hey, you know, what's up with that? You know, I don't want to be labeled as a hypocrite in my own home. So, everybody, everybody is put under a microscope by somebody. Okay. All right. So that concludes chapter. One and now we're ready to go into chapter two, so we're just going to get it started and go as far as we can go. Um, I, I like to keep it at about forty-five minutes to an hour. We got uh, we still got another thirty minutes to go, so if, if I do it an hour, what do I usually do about an hour or forty-five. Uh, usually you go about an hour, an hour and fifteen. Uh, I shouldn't go an hour and fifteen. Okay, but <laughs> but I'll go I'll, I'll go an hour. An hour fifteen is too long, you know. I think. <laughs> You know, people lose their attention span after that and get hungry. You know, so no, I don't. I don't like long-winded, winded people. Just say what you got to say. Okay, so all right, so here we go. Okay, chapter two. Okay, you can write it down if you're writing. Okay, what your aim as a minister must be. Okay, what is our goal? What is our aim as a minister? Okay, well, somebody turn to Isaiah chapter forty-three, verse ten. And whoever can get there, don't raise, don't raise your hands and then get there. Get there and then raise your hand. Because that's cheating. Isaiah what? Isaiah 43, 10. Isaiah 43, 10. Okay, Richard, he, he got his hand up first, so he goes first. Richard, read loud. Isaiah 43, 10 reads, You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant who I am cho have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. And before me, there was no God formed, neither there shall there be after me. Now, that's true. Okay, so, one, number one, when we talk about our aim as a minister, okay, must be that we must know, believe, know, believe, and understand God. Now, that's, that's not all that easy sometimes. Knowing, believing, and understanding. We must know, believe, and understand God. So he quotes the scripture, that ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know, underline that, that ye may know, there's the word where we get to know, and believe me, that's where we get believe, and understand, that's where we get to understand, that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So Muhammad and Krishna and all those other guys, they, they're, they're not God. They may be somebody else's God, but they're just God with a little G. Amen. They don't exist. They're idols. I-D-O-L-S. Okay? They're all in the grave somewhere. Buried. And all their philosophies with them. Yeah. Okay? We serve the only... And, and we are the only religion, actually, as with Christianity, that claims that we serve a God that has risen a Christ that died and that is risen from the dead that's alive today. Amen? Amen. And he said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen? Amen? So the thought behind this, according to the writer, is that this is the reason that God has created you, saved you, and called you into the ministry. That you may know, believe, and understand Him. Your aim, okay, number A, your aim must be to know God, listen to this, know Him personally and intimately, okay? Grow to know Him more and more as you walk day by day. And, and I know this is a challenging statement that I'm about to make, but it's like this. If you're still in the same place today that you were yesterday or last week, then you're, 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 you're stagnating. It's like this cup of this, this bottle of water here. I've been drinking. It's nice and cool right now. It tastes great. But if I let this stay here and I come back next week and drink it, it's not going to taste too good. It'll be hot, stagnant water. All right? So we don't want to stagnate. Okay? We need to continually grow and make sure 
you know, allow yourself, ask the Lord through the Holy Spirit to help you to continue to grow so you're continually moving forward. There's an old saying that you can't steer a parked car. Okay? Right? And any of you ever tried to do it? doesn't work. You can't steer a parked car. But if you get in mo motion, you can do something. So, for some of you passive, more passive guys here, get in motion. Okay? Let's get moving. Do something. All right? You, there are some that are, are, are more out there and more aggressive and they're more... And, 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 and they're on go. And there's others that are just... Some people are just naturally lay back. But we need to get into motion. All right? So, so that's, that's, that, I think that's important. All right? Um, so, the reason that God uh, created you, saved you, and called you into ministry, that you might know Him, uh, so that you might know, believe, and understand Him, your aim must be to know God, know Him per personally and intimately, grow to know Him more and more as you walk day by day. That was point A. Point B, your aim must be to believe God. Okay? Your aim must be to believe God. Now, so what are we talking about when we say believe God? Well, I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six bullets or six points about what that should be. Your aim must be to believe God. Okay? So, how, what, what are, when we talk about believing God, what are we saying? Okay, well, number uh, 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 point A or bullet A is we need to believe His love for the world. That's one thing we should believe. Do you, do you guys believe that God so loved the world? Amen. Okay. Number uh, point uh, uh, B, or two, we need to believe His salvation and call. Do you believe that God died on the cross for salvation of others, that He's called them? Amen. Do you? Do you believe that, died, that He died on the cross for your salvation and for your calling? Amen. Okay, you are to believe His promise of eternal life. you believe that? Amen. Or are you still wondering whether when you die you're really going to go anywhere at all? No. Well, we just sleep. When we die, we just go to sleep. We don't wake up. No, that's not true. It's a promise. I know many people that have been clinically dead <coughs> that died on the operating table. Some saw heaven and some saw hell. They, they, only by God's grace did they get a second bite of the apple. Most people don't. You do end up somewhere. And, they, and even... People that weren't Christians all saw something, you know. It wasn't, in the case of those that didn't believe in Christ, it usually wasn't good. Okay, so, um, we need to believe His promise for, of eternal life. Okay, uh, point number four. Okay, we need to believe His Word, the Holy Scripture. Okay, we need to believe His Word. You know, there's a difference, folks, between believing something... Um, having faith in it and mental assent. Mental assent, it means that you agree with something, but believing requires faith. Do you understand the difference? Do you? Mental assent says, I believe, there is a, well, I, I believe God exists, but believing is, is, is not just acknowledging something, but it's actually walking in it. What's that? Closing your eyes and walking across the street. Yeah, it's closing your eyes and walking across the street. That's what it requires. It's a good example. That's right. Yep. Okay, so uh, number five, okay? One, two, three. Let me make sure I got it right. Five, okay. Believe that He is with you no matter the trial or, in, or temptation. That He will never forsake you. That He cares for you and is looking after you. See, so, our, so what we're talking about our aim as a minister must be to believe God. Well, all of a sudden, we're seeing a whole bunch of things we can believe, right? Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody? Amen. I, I want to know if you're listening to me. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. All right. Because I don't want to be preaching louder than your amen. Amen. Come on, man. You can say amen. amen. We, don't, we don't have to all of a sudden... You guys, I hear you guys when I'm out fishing, man, all the way from the pond, <laughs> shouting. Then I come in here and you guys are quiet as a mouse. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. So believe, we need to believe that He's with us no matter the trial or temptation. That He will never forsake us. That's true. We can forsake Him. We can walk away. But He'll never forsake you. 
And that's nice to know. That, that even if you fall flat on your face, God will not walk away from you. You can get back up. Okay? And as, even as a minister. Okay? He'll never forsake you. He cares for you and is looking after you. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. And then, bullet number six, okay? Believe that He has called and commissioned you to proclaim His Word to the lost and dying, to a lost and dying world. A world reeling in desperate need. This world is, is screwed up, man. It's, 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 I, for lack of any better term, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. We, 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 you know, listen. God has appointed us as ambassadors to bring that word of salvation for, the, for a dying world. So we have to believe that He has called and commissioned us to proclaim His word to the lost and dying world. We need to believe that. You know, because some people can, are, are, are in church, but they still can't believe that God's really called them. Me? You call, You talking about me? You, <laughs> no, no, me? You really called me? Yeah, He called you. You talking to me? Yeah, you. God's called you. And you need to believe that. And, and, and in order to do that, I think you believe the goodness, and, and, and you, be, you, you come to a place where you, you believe in the goodness and the love of God for you. Without believing that, it's kind of hard to believe anything else. Okay? And that's just my own take on that. You can bullet that as bullet number seven if you want. I don't, I don't care. But you, it, it's going to be very hard for you to believe that God has called and commissioned you to proclaim His Word until you believe that He loves you. All right. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta. It's got to be a part of. It's got to be one of your arrows in your quiver. Okay. Um, now, uh, point C. Okay. Your your aim as a minister must also be not just to believe God. Okay, and not just to know Him and to uh, personally and intimately. Okay, but also your aim must be to point C to understand God. Now that's hard. You think, how can I understand God? His ways are above our ways. How do you understand God? So we'll kind of talk about that a little bit and you'll, we'll narrow it down so you understand what I'm saying or what the writer's saying here. Okay, your aim must be to understand God. A, okay, understand that He alone is God, the only living and true God, the sovereign God, and the majesty of the universe. There are, as I said earlier, there are no other God. He is God. Amen. Remember when the, the Philistines, they took the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of the Lord, right? So they haul it into their headquarters or into their temple, and they position it next to their idol, the old idol, Dagon, right? They build this idol. The next day they get up, the Ark of the Covenant is still there, and Dagon, Dagon has been falling over and, and crashed to pieces. You know? That was symbolic to say that, that there's no other God. He is the only God. No other God will stand, so-called God stands before him, unless it's in judgment. Okay? God mentioned a moth. <laughs> All right. I'm waiting for some other... Thing of wildlife to come flying down out of here next to the bird and then a bat. Okay. <laughs> All right. So your, your aim must be to understand God, to understand that He alone is God, the only living and true God, the sovereign Lord, and the majesty of the universe. Okay. Another thing we must understand understand that God is loving as well as holy and righteous. He's holy and righteous, He's loving. And that God is merciful and gracious as well as just. Okay, that God will forgive sins as well as judge sins. Do you guys got that? That's a lot, so I'm going to read it again, okay? I'm going to read it again. God bless you, bro. Sorry, God. Yeah, I hear you. God bless you, man. Okay, so I'm going to say this again, okay? Understand this, okay, that God is loving as well as holy and righteous. See, some people only see God as loving. They see the sweet Jesus walking around with the little... Uh, baby in his arms, you know, and with a little smile on his face. But he's not just Lord. He's not just your Savior. He's the Lord. 
He's, he, he does minister grace, and He does love you, but He's also uh, holy and righteous. And the Word of God says that without holiness, no man shall see God. So we've got to stand in that righteousness, we have to stand in that holiness, and we have to understand that's who He is, yes. and relate to Him that way. So, we need to understand that God is loving as well as holy and righteousness, that God is merciful and gracious, Okay, we get that. We all like the, the, the mercy and gracious part. And he is. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for the mercy and for the grace of God. All right? He is merciful and he's gracious. But he is also, as well, he is just. God is just. He is fair. Do you understand that? Amen. If any man goes to hell here, it's not going to be because God sent him there. It's because we sent ourselves. God is fair. We've had, we're having, we're being given the opportunity now, okay? And you will give others the opportunity by ministering to them, all right? And so, God is merciful, He's gracious as well as just, and we must understand that God will forgive sin as well as judge sin. He does them both, okay? What is one of the other things we can understand? We can understand that God loves and He cares for man. And that he's demonstrated his love in the most supreme way possible. He has given his son to die so that whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life, right? And we can understand this, okay, that God alone saves man. Therefore, he alone is to be worshipped and served by man, okay? There's only one Savior for us. If he hasn't risen, if he didn't die on the cross and... Rise from the dead, and we, we can do like Paul said. We might as well eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Yeah. Right. Let's just go back and live the way we live out, go back to the world. What's the point? But the point is this, that God it does exist. He did rise from the dead. He does live today. And so we need to understand that He alone is man's salvation. He alone saves man. Therefore, He alone is to be worshipped and served by man. You have been called to be God's witness and His servant upon the earth for this one great aim, that you may know, believe, and understand God. We've talked about that. You may know, believe, and understand God. Okay? Um, point two. Okay, we've got another 15 minutes and we'll be done. So I'm going to try to get through two if I can. Okay. Point two is this. Okay. In, in, in what your aim as a minister must be. You must personally know Christ and the power of His resurrection. Let's think about that for a minute. We need to know Christ and we need to know the power of His resurrection. We'll have to talk about, well, what, what, what do you mean the power of His resurrection? Okay, somebody read Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. Philippians 3, 10 through 11. Don't, don't put your hand up till you get there. Okay. My brother over here. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 11. Verses 10 and 11. Oh, 10 and 11. Right. It says, As a result, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I can learn that it means to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that somehow I can experience the resurrection from the dead. Okay, that's good. That's in probably in the Living Translation or something, right? Mine's the. Uh, uh, Amplified. Oh, oh, the Amplified. Yes, I love that translation. And what do you have? What, what translation do you have? NIV. Okay, so let's hear it out of that too. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His suffering, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. So I think between the two translations, we get the point. The point is that it was, it was a the, the call it was the call of the, of, of the writer's heart that I might know him and the power of his resurrection okay and the fellowship listen okay the fellowship of his suffering are you hearing, hearing what I'm saying amen sometimes we suffer but we need to know the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So we'll get into a little bit more about that. Here's the thought behind the passage, okay? As a minister, you must seek a victorious experience with Christ. 
You must seek to know Christ, to know Him personally, and to know Him intimately, to know His glorious power over the world, and that all, and all that is in the world. Do you get that? Okay. Your great pursuit in life is to seek Christ. Yes. All right. Now, there's point A, B, C, and D, and we're going to read those, and then I'll, I'll uh, I'm going to probably close it right there. Okay. Um, so the thought here, okay, I already said this. As a minister, you must seek a victorious experience with Christ. You must seek to know Christ, to know Him personally, to know Him intimately, to know His glorious power over the world and all that is in the world. Your great pursuit in life must be to see Christ, okay? Your aim must be to know Christ, to know Him personally and intimately, to grow to know, to grow to know Him more and more as you walk, what, day by day, okay? Uh, next point. Your aim, okay, must be to know the power of Christ's resurrection, to call upon the power of Christ in conquering this world with all its trials and temptations, sin and death. Do you realize that that's the power of His resurrection? It's, uh, in con we, we, it's conquering this world, this worldly system, the system of the devil. Okay, with all of its trials, all of its temptations, all of its sin, and all of its death. We are to have victory, and, and we are to minister that victory to others. Okay? Your aim must be to know the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. To suffer for the same reasons that Christ suffered. Why did He suffer? To save and to minister to people. Right? Are you willing to suffer to save and to minister to people? I think many of you guys already are. All of you could be somewhere else. Right? I mean, nobody put a gun to your head and said, you have to be here. Not only in this meeting, but no one put a gun to your head and said you had to be in this, in, involved in this ministry. One way or another, you made the decision. Right? Yeah, Maybe somebody true. almost put a gun to your head, but you know, <laughs> either way, I mean, you're here because you, you came. Alright, so now that you're here, okay, your aim must be to know the fellowship of Christ's sufferings, to suffer for the same reasons that Christ suffered, to save and minister to people. That's the, that's the whole deal. That's the whole thing. To save and minister to others. Okay? Uh, then, another aim is that you must be aimed to be conformed to Christ's death. Now, how do we do that? Okay? To subject yourself totally to God. To deny yourself. And put your desires in flesh to death. And to do only the will of God. That's hard to do. But that's what God is saying. He's saying that He needs to be first. How much of you does God want? All of you. Everything. All of you. He wants all of you. And, and so, in order for Him to have all of you, you have to deny yourself. You've got to be willing to deny yourself and your desires. Sometimes we have desires. Sometimes the enemy puts things in our minds. Sometimes we think it's, our, it's us. And many times it's the devil maybe reminding us of the past or, 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 or screwing around with our heads or... Or, or something, and we start thinking about things, and maybe they're the things we shouldn't be thinking about. Maybe they're ungodly things, okay, but we need to put them under our feet. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke those thoughts. I rebuke where they come from. I don't care where they came from me, where they came from the devil, I rebuke them. In the, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, by your grace, by your mercy, by your love, by your spirit, by what you've done for me, I refuse to walk in that in Jesus' name. And start and, 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 and redirect your faith in Christ and in the victory that He's given you. Because, folks, for you to do that for yourself is the only way you're going to be able to minister to other people. I minister that to you because I have to live it every day. It's, it's the way I live my life. Have I arrived there yet? No. Because I'm not... And I'll never arrive there. Not until I'm in heaven or until I'm walking in perfection will I ever get to that place. But we can strive. And we can make the efforts, right? Yes. Do, we, do we all agree with that? Amen. Okay, so we need to understand that our aim must be to be conformed to His death, totally to God, to subject ourselves totally to Him, to deny ourselves and put our, our, our desires and flesh to death, to do only the will of God. Now, there is a scripture. Okay, let me see if it's going to apply to this. Okay, yeah, okay. Romans 12, 1, and we're going to end it with that, with this uh, tonight. Romans 12, 1. Actually, I, I might actually, have, no, no. Okay, hold on, I have two scriptures. 
Okay, you, you got Romans 12.1? <coughs> yeah. I'm going to get somebody else that hasn't read. Okay, which one do you got? 12.1? Yeah. Okay, I got one other one, though, before that. Luke 9.23. So somebody find Luke 9.23. Okay, brother, back there. Okay, you take Luke 9.23, and the brother next to you afterwards take uh, 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 Romans 12.1. Okay, go ahead. You. Luke 9, 23. Right. Then Jesus said to all, all the people, if any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross each day and follow me. Okay. And I, in my version, it says, if any man will come after me, let him deny, deny himself. It's essentially the same thing you're saying. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. But I want to emphasize that. Okay? If you want to serve the Lord... You got to deny yourself. Remember the rich young ruler? Yeah. He comes to the Lord and he he, he was sincere. Lord, I, I I'm ready. I'd I'd like to follow you. The Lord says, well, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, well, what? Uh, he asked him a question and he told he told him, well, you know, what about the commandments? You know, the commandments. He says, I've kept them since I was a youth. The Lord says, yeah. He says, okay, but there's one thing you lack. Go and take everything that you have and go sell it, and then come. So, you know, come, come and follow me. And then the guy hung his head and walked off. He couldn't do the The one thing that he needed to do, he couldn't do. That's why it takes everything. Okay, so if any man wants to come after him, he must deny himself. Folks, you're going to have to do that. We all have to do it. Hey, I'm denying myself right now by moving to my house in Yuma. Trust me. Okay, I like where I lived in Palm Springs. You know, but... You know, the Lord has spoken to me and it's been confirmed, you know, uh, through other ways that that's where I'm to go. I like, I like Arizona. I, I got no problem with moving there. I don't know about the, 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 exactly where I'm going to be living in Yuma compared to where I'm at right now, but it is where it is. It's where God wants me to go and I'm going to go. So I'm, move, I'm, I'm, I'm moving from out in the, out in the wilderness into, into, the, into the hood, for sure, yeah. it looks like, you know. But it's, yeah. uh, but it's all right. It's where, it's where God wants me to go. But, but if it was up to me, would I go there? No, I'd, I'd go look for another place where, where, where cost was cheaper, but where I was still out in the middle of nowhere, nobody bugging me. I had my peace and quiet. You know, no loud music late at night. You know, um, no gunshots and helicopters flying all, all over the place. You know, like I, when I lived in Pomona, you know, every night, man, with the helicopters in the sky and floodlights all, you know, coming through the windows and everywhere else. And, I, you know, I you know I like the peace and quiet. I like desert center. That's why I like coming out here. I'm not, but it looks like I'm going to Yuma. Yuma Amen. won't be as bad as Pomona. It'll be as hot. It'll be just, my, when you're out here sweating. Think of me because I'll be sweating with you when I'm over there because it gets just as hot, if not hotter. All right, but but anyway, we need to deny ourselves and put our desires and flesh to death. That means our lust. And fleshly desires, whatever they might be, um, you know, we need to put those things to death to do, to do, and to do only the will of God, whatever that might be, okay, for you. And then, uh, did we read Romans 12, 1? No, okay. Did we read Luke 9? Okay, okay. So Romans 12, 1. All right, so Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy of to offer your body a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. <coughs> this is your true and proper worship. Okay. Now, in case anybody, for those that are listening here, in case you didn't hear that, the scripture was, was this, okay? In Luke, in 12, Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, and it's only by God's mercy that we can do any of this, right? You guys agree with me? Amen. You can't get up and do everything I just read by yourself. Amen. You can't walk on water. If you can, go do it, man. I'll, I'll, then invite me and I'll try too. <laughs> I, 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 I tried it at the lake the other day and fell in almost. You know, It didn't work. And I wasn't trying to walk on water, but I, I, I didn't succeed anyway. I was just trying to grab a bobber. <laughs> All right. The reality, though, is this, okay, that it's whatever we, we really do, we do it by the mercies of God. So I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. That's good. Because, folks, you're not left on your own to present your body a living sacrifice. We do it by God's mercy. Amen. You present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Okay? When you do that, 
you, you're serving God, and when you do that, it puts you in a place where you can serve God in the ways that He wants you to serve Him. Do, you, do we get that? Amen. Amen. All right, so everybody give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Can I borrow your pen for just a minute? Okay, I want to I want to mark this so I know where to start here. Begin. Okay. All right. So we give the Lord a clap. I think we, because I, I was busy writing. We give the Lord a minute. All right. I'm gonna ask my brother here next to me to close us in prayer. Father God, wonderful Lord in heaven, Father God, I thank you for um, hearing this word, Father God, of um, of remembrance of you, Father God, and our in our purpose, Father God. I ask for reconciliation for everybody in, in here. Yes. You're not only a God of reconciliation, but a God of um, restoration, Father God. Restoring us back to you in, uh, in good faith, Father God, and uh, wonderful um, things to come. And I just thank you for that. Thank you for the labor and the, um, and the um, commitment of um, Pastor Misha to, to uh, faithfully come out here um, yes, and um, share the word of God with us and uh, train us up, Father God, so that yes, we're able Lord. to go ahead um, save someone, Father God, and uh, as we've been saved, Father God, for that one that was um, trained up to save us. I thank you for that, Father God. I thank you for giving us the great commission and um, willful nature to do so. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 You know, pretty soon, folks, uh, before you guys dismiss up and stuff, um, and I'm not going to do this so much. Well, I might, I might actually do it in the, in the ministry class here. But I'm going to, at, at some point, uh, uh, stop for like I did uh, for a week or two uh, on the teaching here, and I want to teach a little bit on the Holy Spirit. Um, I want to answer some questions too. Uh, you know, like when is it appropriate to speak in tongues and not? You know, because our brother here brought up a good question when we brought it up uh, a long time ago. You know, he brought up, well, what about in the service? You know, the person shouldn't speak in tongues unless there's an, an, an one to interpret. And he's right, in a service. But see, you have to remember, understand that, and I come from the culture, that in that particular time, a ser- what, what, a ser- the, you may have worship first. And in your worshiping and praising the Lord, everybody might pray in tongues. And there are no two interpreters. But then when you get into the service part of, of, of your church, you don't do it. Only one person speaks and one person interprets. But, but there's a differentiation between praise, prayer, and worship as opposed to the technicalities of having a service. And so we'll get into that stuff in more depth, and maybe that'll help answer it a little bit more. Because I was in a, in a service last night. I went to a revival uh, meeting or to a healing meeting. I think it was actually the last two nights. And the minister was really annoyed. And we saw one girl. Um, she had had her eardrum surgically removed because, you know, when she was a kid. And they laid hands and prayed over her, and God uh, grew a whole new eardrum. For that girl, mm. that kind of those kind of kind of miracles, like in the Book of Acts and stuff like that. In the beginning of the service, though, he had us all worshiping. Then he says, "Okay, I want everybody to stop." I said, "The beginning of the service, the beginning of our worship." He, we we did our worship. Then he said, "Can everybody just begin and just just pray in the spirit?" So, people that had their prayer language prayed in. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody interpreted it was, because that at that time was just their edification and their worship to God when we pray in. in, in in tongues, there are tongues of, of, of edification, right? Where we're, we're, we're saying, Lord, I praise you, I love you, I worship you in, in our heavenly, in the gift that God has given us. And then there are tongues where we speak, and there is an actual message to the church. And if I just start going, and you guys are sitting there thinking, oh, I wonder what the heck he said. You know, it doesn't make any sense. So there has to be a brother here or a brother there that the God, God will give me the tongue and maybe give him the interpretation of what it is that I'm saying. And if he doesn't give it to them, then I need to interpret it myself. Or I'm out, totally out of, out of order. Okay? But we'll talk about some of the things of the Holy Spirit. Maybe some of the stuff is stuff you don't understand. If you don't understand it, don't worry about it. I, I, a minister once told me this. Don't worry about what you don't understand. Worry about what you do understand. Okay? Because all these other things, you're going to eventually learn them anyway. Okay? And we'll get there. All right, but I just wanted to kind of touch on that because there's a lot of things about the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, deliverance. You're going to be laying hands on people. Demon, you're going to run into people that are demon-possessed. They're not just going crazy. There's a literal spirit in them. It needs to be cast out in some people. And, and so 
you know, at some point in time, you're going to run into that, you know, in the streets, administering in different places, and it's only going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're going to do it, okay? And so you got to understand the reality of that. So we want to definitely get into that. All right, so any final announcements, Pastor, before we close? Nope. Any, anybody have any comments that you want to make before we close it up? Oh, thank you for having me. Amen. All right, so to everybody here uh, at Desert Center School of Ministry and for those that are watching uh, with us online uh, this evening, we want to say good night and God bless you. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye -bye. Amen.